How's everybody doing today? This is Dr. Joe Martin with Warrior Mindset Podcast. It's a brand new podcast where I will be interviewing very interesting people to find out what brings out that warrior within themselves. I've been very fortunate over the years to have been all over the world. I've lectured nationally and internationally, and I've met some very interesting people. And even people I haven't met, but I'm interested in talking to, I'm going to try to bring to this podcast to get some of their ideas on how they became successful. What armor had they put on in their lives, you know, and the mindset that they put together, you know, to become successful. Now, it doesn't have to be success as far as monetary. It doesn't have to be success as far as status. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, success as far as, you know, what you've made or what you haven't made. It's just who you are as an individual and how you've kind of put on that warrior within yourself and how you set up your life. A little bit of background on myself. Like I said, my name is Dr. Joe Martin. Um, my background starts as a, as a former Navy SEAL. I spent six years in the military. I was in a time frame from 1978 to 1984. Not a lot of stuff going on during that time frame. But what it did was it built my foundation of who I am as an individual, of uh, going through the SEAL team, deploying a couple of times with different platoons along the way. But let me digress a little bit further and where I came from and what foundation I have put together for myself on who I am as a warrior within myself and how it kind of follows me along my life. I grew up in a small town called Somers, New York. I graduated high school in 1978. Was an athlete, you know maybe a BC student, really didn't have much going for me from a career point of view. So after I got out of high school, you know, I joined the military. But before joining the military in those younger years in my life, grew up in a very low middle class family. Now, yes, of course, you know, everybody's got skeletons in their closets. Everybody's got things they have to deal with. But for the most part, you know, lived a pretty good life. Very low middle class. My dad was a teacher. Mom was a housewife. So there wasn't a lot of access money uh, to be available for, you know, or excess money to be available for the four kids. If you wanted something, my parents taught you to work hard for it. I remember I was about 10, 12 years old, growing up in the East Coast, um, snowing, delivering newspapers, and one day just kind of hit home, probably put on a little bit of the armor for, for myself as an individual as I grew up learning from my parents to work very hard for what you want to get. I remember snowing out and it was really cold. And as a kid, you're trying to deliver your newspapers with the satchel around the front handlebars and whatnot and asking my dad, hey, dad, listen, would you do me a favor and maybe drive me around in this paper route? And he looked at me and he says, hey, he says, is this your paper route or is this my paper route? And I said, well, you know, it's my paper route, sir. And he says, uh, are you getting paid for this or am I getting paid for this? Well, you know, I'm going to get paid for this, sir. And he says, well, listen. If it's your job, it's your job. If it's my job, it's my job. So basically, for the most part, if it's your job, get out there, put your boots on, put your jacket on, and deliver the newspapers. So it was never really kind of candy coating anything in my life. Hey, listen, if you wanted something, you got to earn it. And I had, you know, odds and end jobs like a lot of young guys did back in the 70s and 80s, you know, cutting lawns, doing some babysitting, cutting trees down, you know, at all sorts of jobs. But what happened was, in my life, who I was as an individual didn't exactly have the grades. Was that B style athlete? Wasn't the A athlete? Was never in the huge, uh, you know, the crowd that people would talk about from influence point of view. Um, so when I made a decision after graduation, basically would have gotten into a community college uh, at the best. Was a basically a D three soccer player at the best. That I just decided to join the military. And with that, that started to build that brick and mortar for who I am as an individual and why I think this podcast in the future, people are going to want to listen to some of the people that I'm going to bring on. As I joined the military in 1978 and uh, spent uh, my first year in the Philippines and uh, met a bunch of guys that were wearing these shorty short called UDTs, these tan shorts. And all I did was run around all day and it seemed like all they did was swim and work out. And I was a regular Navy guy at the time, administration type of, type of dude. And um, so I'm in the gym. And I talk to a couple of guys. Hey, what do you guys do? And he says, oh, you know, basically we're Navy SEALs. And I says, what is that? What is that? What do you guys do? And it seemed like, from my opinion at the time, all I do is PT. All I do is run and swim all day long. 
And they kind of explained what it is. And they said, listen, if you want to become one, you got to try out for it. So I said, okay. But at the time on a regular Navy base, I was just basically an admin clerk. And this is what happens in life too. A lot of times people become complacent and they don't try to work outside the box. And misery loves company. And people would tell you, hey, Joe, listen, you know, you can't do that. That's too hard. You can't do this. That's too hard. And what was, what was saying to me is, no, wait a minute. You can't do that. I'm going to give this a shot. And so basically, you know, did the best I could, did a month's PT, was able to get through the program and was got, got accepted into, into BUDS, which is the Basic Underwater Demolition Seals Training in Coronado, California. And this is about 1979, 1980. And so I get to BUDS, and again, it's lifestyle of people. Who has the mindset to get to these programs? Who's going to put on that armor? Who's going to be able to forge through and become successful? The class at the time started with about 50, 60 people. And by the time we called, you know, what a lot of people you hear, hear the ter- term in the SEAL team is, is um, a hell week. By the time hell week hit, we went from about 50 to 60 guys to guys that finally finished. Hell week was about nine guys. That was it. But ironically, the same thing which happens in the regular Navy, which happens in, even in the SEAL team type training, which happened many times throughout my life, is the fact that misery loves company, right? You're in, the, you're in, in SEAL team type of training, you know, the shit's hitting the fan, you know, craziness is going on, people yelling and screaming and et cetera. Guys would quit, but ironically, people would quit in pairs or more, right? That misery, hey, come with me, we'll quit, we're going to do this together, right? But what happens is, People lose that own, their own mindset, their own warrior within themselves, that they can do something that somebody else can't do. And out of the 50, 60 guys, there's about nine of us that graduated, you know, from that BUDS class, you know, way back, the class numbers were up in the 300s. I graduated in class 112. That's a long time ago if, uh, you know, some of these uh, former team guys are, are listening to this, but that was a long time ago. After I got done with uh, the SEAL team uh, at BUDS training, you know, I got stationed in Little Creek, Virginia. At SEAL Team 2, where I spent, you know, the rest of my four of my six years in the teams. But ironically, I built this foundation of who I am as an individual and that mindset to have that warrior mindset within within myself to be successful in whatever I was to do in the future, whether it was, you know, with a team, whether it was with a platoon, whether it was with, you know, any type of activity, any type of schooling that you went to while you're in the teams. And I brought that out after I finished my six years in the service and got an undergraduate education at Temple University in Philadelphia in exercise physiology. Kind of followed suit with what was going on with the SEAL team, that mental fitness aspect, to then from a civilian point of view to understand that mental fitness aspect from the exercise science, nutrition, and whatnot. Then I brought it on board to get my graduate degree as a sports chiropractor. And so for the last 33 years, you know, I've been practicing the chiropractic. Um, I own a CrossFit functional conditioning gym in town. Um, I'm building that foundation of that warrior aspect. We train a lot of military people. We train a lot of uh, police departments, police cadets, um, young guys getting ready for boot camp, uh, our first responders. And that mindset that, that, you know, I have as an individual to always try to help people become more successful. Having that warrior mindset, having that, you know, never quit, that only easy day was yesterday, that type of of concept. And over the years of being in practice, I've been really fortunate to meet tons of people. Um, Former Navy SEAL Randy Hetrick, who was the owner of the TRX company, I worked with his company for about six years and was able to travel all over the world meeting so many successful people. I've lectured in front of colonels and generals and admirals um, to international and national type of lecturing platforms on fitness, nutrition, motivation, and et cetera. And what I've thought within the years of my practice and the years that I've been in business, that I've been really fortunate to meet a lot of crazy individuals. But I've also been very intrigued with what makes people tick. So with this mindset and mentality that I had, I was really interested in seeking out individuals, whatever walk of life they are. These individuals that have a warrior mentality themselves, that warrior mindset, and what makes them, he or she, very successful in what they do. Um, 
So throughout these, these podcasts coming up in the future, what hopefully I'll be able to bring to the table, bring to these podcasts, is giving my audience an idea of what makes people successful. You know, we're going to try to get men and women on here of all walks of life, whether it's housewives that have been, been successful and how they've done it from, you know, uh, city council to supervisors to police officers to police chiefs to district attorneys to former team guys to, you know, Green Berets to any military first responders, police paramedics and et cetera, to find out what makes them tick. In our life, we hit many pitfalls. We could hit quicksand. How do we deal with that? How do these individuals deal with that? How did I deal that deal with that, you know, going through buds? How did I deal with that with relationships in, in my past? How did I deal with that in business? Do you seek somebody else out to help you? Do you grab a rope that's on the side of the quicksand? Does somebody throw you a rope? Right? Is in your lifetime, have you been feeling like you spinning around like on gravel and you've never really hit pay dirt to really accelerate to get your life going. There's plenty of people out there that had those experiences. And I've been very fortunate in my years on this earth to have met some pretty crazy people. And I'm also very interested in meeting people that I've never met before. So I hope as you guys listen to this podcast, the warrior mindset that I'll hopefully bring people to this table for you guys to learn what it has taken certain individuals in their lives to become successful. What type of armor have they put on themselves in order to become successful? What pitfalls have they made to hopefully make you and I not make the same mistakes that they made, that that we may miss something that they have hit that gave them a pitfall, if you will, that we can maybe overstep to become successful a little quicker than he or she may have become. Once again, this is Dr. Joe Martin with the Warrior Mindset Podcast. I want to thank you very much for listening to our podcast, and we look forward to hearing from you in the future with any comments or any individuals you may like to have on the show.